secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. You know, I'm really starting to get annoyed with your program. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A number of you saw this story in the Los Angeles Times and sent it in. I did see it when it first appeared. But I've decided now to uh, talk about it. This appeared in the calendar section. It's like kind of an op-ed piece, really, but uh, was in the uh, calendar section of the newspaper. It's called Fondly Recalling the Late Great Notion of Chivalry. And here it is. Cindy Bertram is the writer. Last night, I was sitting at the bar of my favorite restaurant, having a drink with a friend. I got up to go to the restroom, and I fell while getting off the bar stool. No, I wasn't drunk. My foot was asleep. Yeah, I've used that one, too. And this was no dainty fall. I did a serious face plant worthy of YouTube. Aside from my obvious humiliation at my spread-eagle display to the entire room... Oh, really? It later occurred to me that... Not one guy came to my aid. No one even attempted to help me up. The writer asks, Is chivalry dead? When was the last time you saw a door open without someone rushing through before you? The elderly being helped with their groceries. A seat given up on the bus. Okay, not so many people ride the bus anymore, but these days it seems that random, random acts of gallantry are few and far between. I don't think men are to blame. Pick yourselves up off the floor, guys. This time it's not your fault, it's ours. I'm saying it out loud. I think women have killed chivalry. Think about it. I am 36 years old, I am single, and I live alone. I have bought and sold a home, have a successful career, and, most importantly, I own a well-stocked toolbox and a power drill and know how to use it. But this is what we wanted, right, ladies? We sought independence. We fought for equality. Somewhere in our quest for equal opportunity, however, we not only burned our bras, we torched the possibility of being the continue, continued recipients of gentlemanliness. I'm definitely not the girl who needs a man to lay down his coat so I don't step in a puddle. I recognize the difference between fairy tale and simple courtesy. But just because I can carry a television up a flight of stairs doesn't mean I want you to sit there watching me do it. All right, then we won't watch. Why should I carry your television up the stairs? Seriously. Carry your own TV up the stairs. She says, don't get me wrong. I think the feminist movement did great things for society as a whole, but along with that came consequences. I have no problem with being viewed as a strong and independent woman. At the end of the day, however, it would still be nice if someone offered to take out my garbage. Well, you know what? It would be nice if someone offered to take mine out, too. Why should you get it done and not me? Ms. Equality. 
be nice if someone offered to do all kinds of things for me, okay? But uh, guess what? They're not doing them for me, and they shouldn't be doing them for you either. She says, women have put such an extraordinary amount of pressure on themselves. Why is there a need to be a superwoman? Does it truly make us appear weak to accept help from a man? I know I am capable of doing most things myself, but if a guy is around, I'm the first person to hand over the hammer and nails. <laughs> if I'm around, I'm going to hand them right back to you, darling. She says, I'm not saying women should feign innocence and gullibility, but let us accept a good deed or two if offered. By all means, open my car door, help me with my coat, walk on the outside of the sidewalk so I'm not next to traffic, and for Pete's sake, extend your hand to help me up if I fall on the floor. These are not my problems, darling. These are your problems. You wanted equality. Nobody's helping guys out when these things happen. No one's opening our car doors. Nobody's helping us with our coats or... Walking on the uh, sidewalk side so we're not next to traffic. Why should you get any of that stuff? And if you fall down and you need to bring a TV upstairs, you need to hammer something, and get, get with it. You're our equal. Do it. Don't talk about it. Don't demand equality. Show your equal. Chivalry is dead. Goodbye. Good riddance. Because, you know, the only women I open the car door for are women who will pick up my stinky socks. You know what I'm saying? You want me to carry your television up the stairs, it's going to be while you're making me dinner. Darling. Okay? If you're not folding my shirts, I'm not taking out your garbage. It's that simple. She wraps this little piece up by saying, Call me old-fashioned, but I tend to believe that if women behaved a little more like ladies and a little less like men in a locker room, chivalry might have a chance to return in full force. Again, I don't think we're in complete disagreement here. I believe, ladies, if you would get back to making me breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and folding my socks, and hanging my clothes after you've laundered them, if you would give me sex on demand when I want it, I could be awfully chivalrous. I could do a lot of those things. But because most American women are bitches and won't do those things, I'm paying them back in full force. She says, sure, I could chug a beer like a guy and burp letters of the alphabet, but I try to do it only in front of my brothers. I can curse like a sailor, but I make every effort not to. And if pulling out a dress and spraying a little perfume encourages a gentleman to buy me a drink, why not? I still feel like a confident, liberated woman. Then she says, maybe I'll even buy the next round. I doubt it. Women are the cheapest creatures on earth. You're not buying anybody around. It's just my opinion. Chivalry is dead. And as far as I'm concerned, it ended when women stopped doing things for us. Stopped cooking, stopped cleaning, started being demanding all the time. Started telling us in the office they won't make coffee for us. You know, it's amazing. The same women who tell you in the office, I'm not going to make coffee for you. What, you think because I'm a woman I'm supposed to make coffee for you? They're the same ones who ask you to put the new bottle of Arrowhead drinking water on top of the you know, water fountain in the office. They're the same ones who ask you to lift heavy objects, like a box of things, or to get something out of the closet on a top shelf. These are the same women who are saying, well, you think I'm supposed to make coffee because I'm a woman? And my response is, I'm not doing anything in the office that's on my job description. And that means I'm not lifting any heavy objects. I'm not getting anything out of the top shelf of the closet. I'm not doing anything that isn't on the job description. It's that simple. We can all play this game, not just women. Chivalry is dead. Good riddance. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. You want to piss women off so much. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. 
chivalry. Dead, dead, dead. Greg on the Tom Likas show. How about? Hey, Tom. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay, Greg. Hey, I just wanted to call and tell you I agree. You know what? I'm glad chivalry's dead, and I'll tell you why. Just one of the glaring examples is... A lot of times if I'm walking in a door like a gas station or something and I see somebody behind me, I'll hold the door open just to be courteous. You know, but nine times out of ten, it's the man that says, thank you, bro. Thanks, dude. You know, the woman just walks through and sometimes even gives you a dirty look. You know. So like, why do you hold the door open for women? Stop doing it. Well, no, I mean, just in general, guy, girl, it doesn't matter just to be curious, courteous. You know, but... Like I said, it's the guys that are appreciative and say, hey, thanks, bro. You know, the girls will just walk right through, you know. So why don't you just do it for guys? Huh? Why don't you just do it for other guys? Well, I'm, I don't swing that way. <laughs> I, well, you're not having sex with them. You're all. holding doors open. Uh, why do it for women if they don't appreciate what you're doing? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's kind of the way I am. I mean, if the guy's like, guy or girl's like a foot behind me, yeah, I'll hold the door. What what the heck, you know? Well, if, but, if people don't appreciate what I'm doing for them, I stop doing it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, you know, they're getting what they deserve. You're right, you know, because, I mean, they, they want and want and want and want. They want everything to be equal, but then they turn around and say, oh, but no, but you're going to pay for my dinner and buy my hotel and take me on a trip. Right. Yeah, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. That's right. You know, that's what I had to say. Hey, can you take me out Seattle horse effort style? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> because it'll just get bleeped out. What's the point of playing it if they're going to bleep it out? They're going to bleep it out. I'd love to play it for you. Cindy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Daddy. Hello, dear. First time, long time. I'm a huge fan. I just want to let all the boys out there know that Tom Likas is a man. Listen to everything that he says. Chivalry is not dead for those women who are fortunate, such as myself, who are smart and keep their man fed, keep his clothes laundered, keep his ass ready, whatever you want. He, all you have to do is ask. And Bye. that's what he gets. And let me tell you, my doors get open, my dinner gets paid for, I get the... Yeah, the reason chivalry is dead is because women have turned into a bunch of cold bitches. Exactly. I totally agree. I think that it's become this whole thing where it's like women just want to take and take and take, and it became one thing uh, back in the day where it was give and take. It was, you know what, I've got a good woman at home, so I'm going to be good to her. And then they just wanted to keep taking and taking and taking and not giving back. And I totally agree. I mean, I'm a Latin woman, um, so I was raised a little differently than some of these American girls. You know, I mean, it, it's been known for us. We have the coffee ready for our men. We serve them first. They eat their dinner first. Yesterday, I was sick with a 101 degree temperature. I still managed to round up some dinner for my man before he went to his hockey game. I mean, it's just a matter of giving so that you can get back. Perfect. So, yeah, I mean, that's all I wanted to call and say, Tom. I'm a huge fan. Thank you so much for what you're doing out there. My fiancé and I, we are huge fans of yours. And uh, believe me, I keep him happy. And uh, could you take me out African tribal style? I certainly can, Cindy. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Here's David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad, how's it going? Doing okay, son. Hey, I got a Starbucks story. I don't go there anymore, thanks to you. But when I used to go every day, I, I used to open the door for chicks. So I did this one day. I didn't get a thank you. So the next day, I opened it up for the same chick. I opened it up, no thank you. So I cut right back in front of her in line. She gave me a weird look. The next day, same chick. I opened the door for her, no thank you, and I cut back in line for her again. And she's like, why do you keep cutting in front of me? I go, because I was in front of you before I opened the door. She goes, just next time, don't open the door. And ever since then, I've never opened the door for a chick. But you see that? They're bitches. This is what I'm talking about. Right on, Dad. Take me out old school. Here you go, David. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Larry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Tom. Hello, Larry. How you doing today, my friend? Great. 
Great. I'm glad you brought this topic up because we haven't had this discussion in a while. I was telling Dino about 13 days ago, I was at the block in Orange at the old Navy store there, just buying some socks for work. So basically, I'm standing in line for about eight minutes or so, and obviously the line's building up. So here comes the next cashier to open up. And rather than using the proper protocol and saying, sir, you're next in line, I'll take you, she just goes to her register, and there's this gal behind me that showed up after me. She looks in this built like Rosie O'Donnell. So what does she do? She just decides to go up to her line, the new cashier, and I ask myself, now, what would Tom like if then Dino and Gary do in this situation? So basically, I just literally bolted right in front of her. I never touched her, but I got in front of her, and she goes, oh, you didn't need to do that. I would have let you go in. I go, well, if you were to let me go in, you would have said, sir, you're next. So basically, I told her, you know what, lady? It's lunchtime. There's the food court. Why don't you go grab yourself a donut? I'm buying my socks, and I'm out of here. And all the employees just stood there and looked at me, and nobody said a word. And I paid cash, and I got out of there, and th- th- I was so proud of myself. And I told myself, I know Tom would be proud of me if I did that. Very nice. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, Tom, I love your show. A long-time uh, supporter. Will you do me a favor and take me out Lacey Peterson style, followed by a Kurt Warner? Thank you, Jesus. That would be tasteless, Larry. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jeremy on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Uh, I just started listening to you uh, this past year, Tom, uh, and I love the show. Um, what I want to call that, what I want to call it about is I'm really angry at all these uh women that think that they're entitled to an open door or the moms with the baby carriages that think they're battering rams and force their way through a door uh, or don't say thank you. if you. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous. It's like they have a sense of entitlement. But I'm fighting they... back. I, You know, those. Uh, I've talked about it, those spaces they have at some of the shopping malls that are supposed to be for pregnant women. I park in them. Why not? You might be expecting a baby sometime. They don't know. Never know. Never know. Well, I thank you, Tom. I just wanted to, uh, you know, just start listening to you. And uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't have the Likas 101. I am married, but uh, it's a good marriage. My wife makes loads of money, so uh, I'm on the other end of it. I make a pretty good living myself, but uh, fortunately, I uh, I uh, lucked out. I understand. Sounds good to me, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jim on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Father Tom, how are you today? Doing okay, Jim. You know, thank you so much for bringing up this subject. It is, it is a major pet peeve of mine for many, many years. The problem I have with women regarding chivalry is what I would like in return is not so much being a, like my cleaning lady or my cook. I could do that myself. What I need them to do is look hot for me. They got to look hot all the time, not just when we start hooking up and get together. I'm talking three months from now, six months from now. If I'm still with you, one year from now. I, I need that. I got to have that all along, all along. It's got to be. I need that kind of a woman, not a mommy, not someone to clean up after myself. I can do that. But so many women just let themselves go. As soon as they think they got you, that's it. They don't have to work on themselves. They fatten up, no more makeup, put on the sweats, go to the mall. You got to put it out to them. They are just slobs. And if they're going to be that way, hey, I'm just going to move on because the nice thing about the situation today is we got the numbers. There are more of them than us. We can pick whoever we want. Exactly. So, hey, you know, they got to give us, if they want something in return, they got to give us. Besides, they don't need chivalry. That was popular in the days when it was necessary. Back in what, 1000 AD, when doors were so big and heavy, nobody could open them except a strong guy? Uh, you know, it, this is the 21st century, 22nd century. They, they, all the conveniences of, of, of the world are here available to American women. Uh, they don't need chivalry. They just don't need it. You know, move on to something else. I agree with you, Jim. Thank you. A lot of people have very strong opinions about this. Heidi, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, how are you? Great. I just want to say I am so tired of women, you know, complaining that they want equal rights and they want to be treated equally with men and 
blah, 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 blah. And then they complain when, you know, they don't open the door for us or, you know, they don't open the car door for us or they don't pay for our dates or something. I just, I don't need a man to pay for my dates or to open the door for me. You know, I, I have a boyfriend and, you know, he treats me out sometimes and, and, you know, sometimes I take him out, but I, I don't, I don't need that. You know, I just, I think it's, it's retarded that women just complain about stupid things like that. Do you know what I mean? I just, I agree. Of course. And I think it's, in our, in our relationship, it's kind of like, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. You know, if he does something for me, I'm going to do a little something for him. Well, that's what it's all about. I mean, most American women now don't want to do anything for a man. And then they expect us to do everything from paying for the dates to opening the car door uh, to uh, uh, all of the things this woman's asking for. Uh, lift heavy object, carry my TV upstairs. No, no, no. Well, I mean, I think if, if I was to ask him to, you know, will you do me a favor? I can't do this, you know, then maybe he would. But, I mean, I don't expect him to jump right off, you know, his... But the thing is, if you're not willing to clean his skid marks, why should he be doing stuff for you? <laughs> No, I know. I know that. And I, I do. I help him out a lot. I, I, you know, I do his laundry when he's busy and he doesn't have time to. And, you know, if I need a favor, then he'll do it. But, I mean, I don't expect him to just go around waiting on me hand and foot. And I don't wait on him hand and foot. But, I mean, if he needs help with something, I definitely will help him with something, you know, no doubt. Good for you, Heidi. I'm glad to hear that. Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. Hey, listen, I just tuned in. Uh, the subject just hit so close to home, as I was telling your screener there. About a month and a half ago, I uh, dropped my daughter off at school. I go into to a coffee bean. I open the door for this girl. She doesn't say anything. She just walks right in as if it's her God-given right, right? So I track it the entire day. I open the door 15 times for people. Nine of them were women. None of them said thank you. The other six were men. They all said thank you. for So from that point forward, I do not open the door for women, period. Yeah, that's what you should do. Exactly. It was horrible. It was horrible. I was so distraught. At the end of the day, I wanted to slam the door and say, no, 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 I'm not going to open the door for you, period. But guys, every single one of them, every single one of them said thank you. And because like, nobody ever does it for them. Exactly. Exactly. So anyhow, man, love the show. Take me out uh, old school stuff. All right, here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Kelly on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Um, I was just kind of curious. Have you ever sat and talked to any older couples that have been married 50, 70 years? I mean, it's a precious commodity nowadays. But if you sit and talk to those people um, that have been married a long time, I mean, chivalry is not dead for the fact of if you talk to them and ask what their secrets of marriage are, I mean, they're women, you know, cook, they're women clean, they're, they're women, you know, look good for them, don't come home, you know, so they're all slouch. You've had a couple callers that if you talk to an old person they that have been married, they say the exact same Thing. Right. And by the way, I might add, uh, women who've been married 40 years, they don't have MySpace pages or Facebook pages. They don't go to girls' night out and stay out all night drinking and dancing with other men. That That's why those marriages lasted. Exactly. Well, I'm 30, and I've been uh, married since I was 18 with two kids. And before I got married, I sat down with uh, my grandparents. And um, we had a discussion. They, you know, what made their marriage successful? One, they never do anything, you know, like with without each other. I don't go to bachelorette parties. I don't go to those kind of places unless my husband, you know, goes with me. I work 40 hours a week, plus have two kids. And when my husband comes home, I take off his shoes and rub his feet. His Ooh. dinner's ready. His dinner's ready. I mean, he has to turn me down for sex because, I mean... I keep him looking good. And at the same time, you know, my myself, I try to keep up. My grandma said, never, ever, you know, get to the point where your man comes home and you're in sweat and look frumpy. He, he won't want to come home to you. 
So you, you always look good, even if you have kids. So, it, you know, I don't think that chivalry is dead. I think that women make their own conditions. I think that if you, you know, act like, you know, back then or many years ago when, you know, marriages were successful, that, I mean, take a look at what those women did. That's why their men want to come home, and that's why their men will do things for them. I think you're right about that. Tom like it. What's up, Tom? Tom like it. You're my boy, man. 800. 800. Tom, Tom, Tom. Tom! The Tom Like It Show. The Tom Like It Show from Hollywood. Is Chivalry dead? Yes. Goodbye, Eileen. Hello. Hello? Oh, Jesus. Hello? Hi, Tom. Hi, Eileen. How are you? Great. Okay, I'll get right to it. I'm calling because I would like to weigh in on the side of common courtesy. For me, it's not a matter of gender. I will myself open the door as a courtesy to a male or a female anytime, anywhere. I'm the type of person when I go into a retail outlet, a restaurant, what have you, and I go through myself, let's say I open the door for myself, I will never, ever allow that door to close without turning around to see if there's an individual behind me so that door doesn't slam in their face. I have had that experience where that's happened to me, whether it be a man or a woman. I mean, what about just playing common courtesy? Forget well, it's not gender. there anymore, and uh, women don't say thank you. The other caller was right. So if I hold the door open, it's for a guy now. Well, I must tell you that I say thank you, whether it's a woman or a man. Yes, but you're an exception to the rule. Generally, women don't say thank you. They, they have a sense of entitlement, and I think it's time to break women of that habit. Well, I think as human beings, we have to give and we have to... No, well, well I tell you what, we I, I give selectively. And by the way, women don't hold the door open for me. I'll tell you that. Well, I tell you, you've never had the pleasure of being either next to me in front of a door or behind me. Well, you are you are the pleasure of being behind you in a door. Well, I don't know how pleasurable that would be. <laughs> well, in unless terms I had your pants down, huh? For you. In terms of my opening it for you and oh. allowing you to maybe go through first, you would probably have a heart attack if any woman did that for you, and I would. Yes, I probably would. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Dale on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Dad? Yes, son. Long time listener, first time caller. I love your show. I listen all the time. Listen, I was raised by a single mom, and uh, she pounded that stuff into my head, all that stuff. So I wondered why I never got any tail when I was in high school. And uh, by the time I ended up listening to you and figuring it out, I started doing the opposite of what she was always telling me. And uh, I don't make much money at all, so uh, I don't pull them in like the Gordon's Fisherman. But uh, it sure helps out a lot being uh, being a man and uh, not following those old-time rules anymore. I'm sure you pull in what the Gordon Fisherman pulls in, though, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's not what I mean. Yeah, well, yeah, it sure Occasionally helps. Occasionally breaded. Huh? <laughs> it sure helps to uh, listen to you, Tom. I follow your examples as much as I can, and uh, when I falter, I realize the errors of my ways. And uh, thanks a lot. And uh, you know what? Those uh, <laughs> getting raised by a single mom just doesn't cut it anymore. I agree with you, Dale. Thank you for that. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. It's Zach on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Great. Hey, so I got just the thing to break these chicks of uh, their habit of not saying thank you when you open the door. And uh, th this is something I do personally, and it's actually pretty fun. Uh, what you do is you hold the door, and when they say nothing, you just smile and say you're welcome. That way, uh, you know, they feel bad, and half the time they'll say But that's the thing. They don't feel bad. So what I do is I let the door slam in their pretty little face. Well, that certainly works, too. They I deserve just, uh, it. That's what they deserve. Of course. I just found it's uh, kind of fun to actually say you're welcome, because sometimes I found they do feel bad. Women have the sense of entitlement, and I have, I'm on a personal mission to break uh, at least the women I meet of that sense of entitlement. <laughs> cool, man. Beginning well, with uh, at least one chick that I bounced from my life, because she thought she was entitled to spend money and... Uh, entitled to trial, just entitled everything, took everything for granted. Yeah, well. Tired of it. 
Yeah, well, I think we all are. And uh, I have a tasteless request for you, Tom. What's that, Zach? Will you take me out uh, Arizona helicopter crash style? Oh, that's one of the most tasteless ones we have. This oh. may be the end of this thing. Well, he's taking okay, off he's running. Okay, uh, now it's a foot chase. Okay, now he's jumping into another, in another vehicle. vehicle. Okay, okay. All right, they're Doors closing in. Police. Looks okay. like they've... Oh, we're we're going to pull out. We don't, we, don't, uh, we don't know what has just happened right there. It's that little scream at the end that really makes it tasteless. Fends me every time we play that. Why do people ask to hear that? one 800 800 tom Tristan, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's it going? Doing okay, sir. Well, I'm kind of glad you brought this up, really. I mean, I'm, in, I'm a student in, you know, in college as well as 101. <laughs> and in taking a history course, I mean, why did people complain about chivalry being dead? You know, it's not like that's a recent thing. It's been dead for, like, 600 years. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's really uh, been dead, as far as I see, for the last 35, 40 years, ever since the beginning of, of the, the feminist movement of the late 60s. Well, I, yeah, I, I see what you mean there, but I, mean, I was thinking more along like, you know, you talk about medieval chivalry where, you know, men actually got something out of being that way. Well, they, by, by the way, men got something out of being that way in the 50s and most of the 60s. I suppose you're right. There, I too. mean, back then, women uh, still made your dinner for you. They still did your laundry for you. When you were at the office, they still made coffee for you. You ever see the TV show Mad Men on AMC? You know, they, it's a shows all these guys work for ad agencies in ni the year 1960. Yeah, you know, oh, when yeah. you came home to your wife, dinner was served. There was no, you got two hands, they get you down. <laughs> well, I mean, for real, I mean, either way you look at it, I mean, it's been dead for 600 years or 30 years. And then in either case, I mean, however you look at it, there was probably somebody female behind that kind of destruction in the yes. first place. For real. I mean, in every kind of history look I can take on it, that's what I see. So, I mean, I'm really glad you brought it up because I agree. And... Like the last caller said, it's, you know, not even, or you were telling him, not even worth it to, you know, hold it and say you're welcome. Just slam it in their face. That's right. You'd get absolutely jacked now. That's, so that's what I'm doing. Great. It's awesome to hear from you, you know? <laughs> Thank you, Tristan. You, you think you can take me out with a machine gun and I can do that, of course, Tristan. Here you go. Biatch. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. David. Yes. Uh, I believe women ask for chivalry to die when they ask for equal rights. I don't know. They're not out there paying our bills and opening doors for us. That's exactly right. Right. You when, know, when you come home from work, are they making meals for us anymore? No. No. Are they doing your laundry anymore? No. No. Are they ironing your clothes and cleaning your skid marks? No. Absolutely not. That's right. I'm a service member, and, you know, I work around women, and I see it all the time. Oh, I can't do that. That's a man's job. You, you know what? You shouldn't have joined the military. You shouldn't have done this. If you wanted to be a woman, you should have stayed home and cooked something for your husband. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Abs I completely agree with you. Fold my shirt. <laughs> That's it. Now, I'm a married man, and I guarantee if I could print out, like it's 101, I could put a check mark next to everything. My wife's done it. You know, you know, I'm, I, 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 I love her, but, you know, I make some sacrifices, but some things just don't slide. She's doing my laundry on the weekend. Love that. <laughs> All right. Very nice, David. Thank you. All right. I appreciate Take it. Take a bong hit there. All right, David, here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Anna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Very good. I wanted to make a comment to all the men in the world, including my husband, who I'm hoping is listening right now because he said I didn't have enough chutzpah to call you. Um, it's about open... Okay, I'm just going to hit on one subject and then maybe go into others. It's about opening the doors. I think it's a courtesy. I just think it's really nice when men open the door for me. I do say Well, it's really it. nice, but generally women don't do it for us, so... I do, I do, I do. Generally, I women don't. 
Generally, they don't, but for all those women that do, including myself, I really do not like the fact that when uh, people on the radio are saying, well, I'm not going to do it because I don't I'm not. I just think people should just do it out of the goodness of their heart. Because no, no. A lo- no, no. No, no, no. You know what? Uh, what I'm doing out of the goodness of my heart is I am retraining women to have them lose that sense of entitlement. No. That's what I am that. doing. That's what I'm as doing. It is, as it is, women are looked down upon, especially in my own culture, to to cook and clean. And that's because we are women and we have to do that. That's not fair. Well, no, I no. do everything for my husband, and I want him to know this, that I do love him with all my heart. But when he does the smallest little thing, it goes, you know far beyond than what he thinks it does. When he opens the door for me or when any other gentleman outside in, you know, in the real world opens the door for me, I'm always thanking them because I just think it's such a nice thing for them. All right, but you're the exception to the rule, and generally women are bitches about this, especially American I women. I completely agree. I and agree. so I agree. now I am going to say. treat women the way women generally treat me. But that would be horrible for somebody to treat me that way. If somebody wants to do a well, comment for them, Maybe would... you need to do a little campaigning to get women to stop being bitches. <laughs> yeah, it's like asking a man to pee in the toilet and not miss. Come on, Tom. Ask my I don't miss. Do he would never, ever succeed. Ask him to do that. You would, n- And I'm always cleaning up after him. And, yes, and, and clearly it things. bothers you, but you're still young and married. And so, therefore, you're, you're not uh, openly complaining about it or making it a big deal. But ultimately, down I the am. line, you'll be whining about this, complaining, I'm, threatening. I am. You're just not <laughs> at that point yet. I have gotten to that point. Oh, you're already I'm there. I'm just saying as a general Isn't rule, that great? Here we nine. are. Here we are. You're 24 years old, and you're already with your husband. You can't, can you please pee in the toilet? Isn't that great? That, okay. There's something that Another, I have to you've just given us another reason to have a housekeeper part. instead of a wife. Uh, say that last part You've again. just given us another, still another reason to have a housekeeper instead of a wife. My housekeeper okay, never house. comments on my urinary practices, ever. Can I say one thing? The housekeeper will never make sure there's lotion on his really dry feet in the morning and kiss him goodbye every morning. I'll tell you what, if I had an extra 10 bucks, my housekeeper would do that too. No, they wouldn't. Not with the love. <laughs> You've never Not met my love. housekeeper. Come You've never met Raina, <laughs> my housekeeper. She would do it. Well, all I want to say is don't tell guys to do be, to be uh, mean. I already to did, and I will again. Guys, That's women have a sense it. of entitlement, and we need to break them of it. Don't no do holding that. doors. No holding doors anymore. We're done with that. Don't no do opening that. car doors for guys. them. Forget it. As it is, every guy has become an a-hole to me because they just think that I'm one of those, like you say, bitches, right. and I just don't like that treatment. Well, too bad. Too, too bad. bad. Not fair. You're, 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 you know what? Blame the people. The world blame the people nice. responsible. The women of the world. The women of say that again. Blame the people responsible. The women of the world. No, it's Tom. You are okay. You're leaving me speechless, which is really ridiculous. Well, okay. I'll, I'll, that's great. That means I can move on to the next call. Andy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think it's about chivalry. I think it's about partnership. I, I really do. What do you Are mean you by partnership? Partnership, I mean by, um, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Right. I, I work um, anywhere from 12 to 13 hours a day, and um, my fiancé doesn't work. And when I come home, I, well, I have to mention that we have an eight-month-old baby, too. And she doesn't know how to cook. I know how to cook because I work in a restaurant. I own a restaurant. And But my clothes are clean. My baby's taken care of. She's fed. And I don't have anything to complain about, you know. As far as, like, opening doors, I think that's just a kind of like a, a side comment. Well, thing. I think that's all part of it. But uh, I do thank you appreciate the call our email address is my name write to me at tom at blow me up tom.com that's tom at blow me up tom.com the tom like show